Hi, today I'm going to do something that will not shock you or me or anyone for that matter. I'm going to take my super dangerous microwave oven transformer and reduce its output voltage to maybe zero, but instead get thousands of amps of current, hopefully. But what can give us a bit more confidence is learning the skill we need using my sponsor Skillshare where you can learn from experts. Click on the link in the description to get a 30 day free trial. Oh, I mean other people have done it before but it seems I'm the only one who's missing a very high current source of AC power so let's do it. Now this is the primary of the transformer and that's the secondary with maybe 20 times more windings than the primary and well basically it changes the 120 volt AC input to like over 2000 volts. And I've seen a lot of people basically just cut the secondary wires and destroy them but I don't want to just destroy some nice wires. If I can cut the core itself that would be preferable. My table is being covered in dust. Maybe this is not an indoor activity. I'll be back. There we go. I just cut the weld on the sides of the iron core and just banged it off like this. Now I can pull the windings out like so. Did they glue it in? Hammer, hammer. It's not budging at all. The layers of the core are falling apart, but the windings are not coming out. Ooh. Primary is loose. <laughs> Here's the primary. Secondary. <laughs> it's out. And here is the secondary. Hopefully it's out in one piece, so maybe I can put it back. Oh, my core is in shambles, but it's fine. After two hours of banging and smashing and sanding the glues away, the primary is finally in. And if you just put this on top, we're done. You know, let's just turn it on and see if there is any craziness. Oh my God, what a sound. Wow, oh, look, the magnetic field is holding it tight. Let's disconnect this. There you go. <laughs> Well, it seems beside the noise, it should be working fine. How does it work without the top on? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it seems all these plates are just pushing each other apart. Maybe I'll glue them later so they are less noisy. Ah, this is a strong magnet. Now, what happens if we run a single turn of wire through the transformer? Okay, so we should have some voltage here, which is not much. Now, what happens if we short the output? My wires are smoking. It's getting hot and it's too noisy too. Let me crazy glue all these plates back together. Okay, the whole thing is crazy glued together. Okay, let's power it up. So quiet now. Wow, good gluing helps. Let's read the output voltage of a single turn. Yeah, around 1.1. So this means the number of primary turns is around 110 roughly. Let's see how many million amps we'll get shorting our single turn. Ow! Gets hot quick. Let's hold it with this. 90 amps and it's going down slowly. Things are heating up. Okay. Well, this is not the millions of amps I was hoping. Let's check the resistance of my wire. I'll run 10 amp DC through it with my power supply. And read the voltage. Around 0.2 volts. So 0.2 divided by 10 is 20 milliohms. And 1.1 volt AC output of the single turn divided by 20 milliohms is 55 amps. We were getting 90 amps. Hmm. Maybe the resistance of this wire is actually lower. Nevertheless, it's not a thousand amps I wanted, which means I have to raise the voltage across the same wire. So I did two turns now. And now the voltage we get should be double. Yeah, 2.2 volts AC. Okay, how many amps do we get now if we short this? 
160, 140, it's dropping. Oh my God. I think I'm burning the whole thing. <coughs> 160 amps, but it was dropping because as we know the resistance increases as the copper gets hot and the thing is Melted together now. Jeez. I guess I have to cut it There you go molten nicely together <laughs> Garbage. Hmm. I need thicker wire and even higher voltage. Oh, you may ask me, maybe you are such a dummy. You already have 2000 volts. Why didn't you just short that for millions of amps? Where is my green screen? See, the resistance of my transformer secondary is around 60 ohms, which means even if I short it at 2000 volts, I won't get anywhere more than 33 amps. And that's not the only problem, because my secondary is around 20 times more winding than the primary. 33 amps at the output means around 660 amps from the input, or 79,000 watts. So in order to draw a lot of current from the secondary, it has to have much fewer number of turns compared to primary so that the primary current doesn't exceed my maximum allowed 15 amps. But that results in a much lower output voltage, which means our secondary wire must have a very small resistance not to limit the output current. I need thick wires. I remember I had something thick. Ah, <laughs> eight gauge. Super thick. Okay, let's measure the short circuit current. Still two secondary turns. Oh my God, what's going on? It melted my clamp. <laughs> Did it draw 800 amps? I have to see it for myself. Okay, just quick before everything melts. 500, oh my God. What happened? <laughs> melted again my thick wire is gone but i got over 500 amps <laughs> there you go my poor wire garbage so i went and bought the thickest wire available this baby is a 3-0 awag awg gauge wire capable of doing 200 amps continuous and a fusing current of 2,700 amps for 10 seconds. <laughs> its length is 135 centimeters, which means its resistance is around 270 micro-ohms, very small. So if a single turn can put one volt of EMF across it, it means if I short circuit it, I would be able to send more than 3,600 amps through it. <laughs> Although the transformer is not super efficient, so I expect less. So we try to bend this and send it through the transformer. Yeah. Wow, this is terrible. Whatever. Now I'm gonna short circuit its output. Funny thing is, it's so low resistance that the highest point of resistance is where the wires will contact. So I'll wrap the short circuit with copper wire to make the best contact possible. Here is the short circuit. <laughs> I don't know if this thing can accurately measure that high of a current, but let's give it a try. What did it say? 4,000? Ow! The contact is definitely getting hot. I can melt things with it. I have a spoon in my stash. Let's see. Of course, with the increase of the output resistance due to adding the spoon, I expect the current to be much less. Okay. How much is the current? I see some smoke. Who's smoking? Is it warm? Ow, geez. <laughs> Hmm, if I increase the output voltage by doubling the number of turns, I can double the current through the spoon and melt it. This only, this wire was easier to bend. Ah. I think I have to break off this top again, bend the wire, put it in and glue it back on. There. Two turns. Would it fit in there? It's in. It's in. I 
finally shoved it in, although all the core plates disconnected now, but let's just turn it on like this. It's probably going to be super noisy. It's okay, I'll replace the noise with some elevator music. Let's see if we can melt some spoon. out of me <laughs> okay the key is not to be afraid of the sparks they're just some low voltage high current sparks not harmful to me and this will show one millivolt per amp so we can measure the current My spoon absolutely melted! Oh my god! Alarm scared me! <laughs> and of course, let's melt an obligatory penny! <laughs> that didn't work! <laughs> Look at this rubbish! I thought the penny was still made of copper! It's not! It's just copper plated! What is it? Like zinc or something? Yep. I guess it is copper plated zinc as it should be. Let's see how much current it takes to fuse a 10 gauge wire open. <laughs> that didn't take long. Now I'm thinking if you have a hard time picking a lock, you can melt the sh out of it. It was too much to hold. Ah, not the easiest way to lock a pick, I guess. I mean, pick a lock. <laughs> so I guess I have the capability now to generate a few thousand amps. Now what is its use for me? I guess I can create a melting pot to melt metal in it. Not of a use for me, I guess. Hey, electronics is not for electronic use only. We provide power and capability and tools to everyone. We are such generous gods. Similar to professionals at my sponsor Skillshare, a community of experts sharing their skills and knowledge around many different subjects like programming, video creation and editing, electronics, creativity and more. First thousand people to join using my link in the description can enjoy learning from these classes free with a one month trial that gives you full access to everything Skillshare. You can finish many classes in this period already that makes you want to keep going. I finished the class logo design with Draplin by Aaron Draplin a while back. He designs complex graphics so effortlessly it's so satisfying, which ended up in me designing my own forbidden electric guitar shirt. Skillshare also has hundreds of career focused classes you can use to reinvent your goals and yourself, which can be intimidating. But what's better than a professional giving you tips on starting small, being productive, building your own brand and more? You want to find more time to do the things you enjoy? Take productivity and time management class. You want to make creativity your full-time job like I did? Then take build a creative career class. Enjoy learning and thank you for watching.